This video lecture addresses plant adaptations to the environment. Much of the content and the organization are after Smith and Smith elements of ecology. Different plant species are adapted to different light environments. The presence of other plants greatly influences the amount of PAR that each receives. Consider sun versus shade plants. Shade or low light plants tend to have a lower light saturation point and a lower maximum rate of photosynthesis. Differences in the performance of sun versus shade plants are related to rubisco, which is a costly molecule for a plant to manufacture. Recall the important role of rubisco and enzyme in catalyzing carboxylation. Shade plants produce less rubisco, re which reduces energy cost and leaf respiration rate and produces more chlorophyll. A lower photosynthesis rate yields a lower light compensation point. The lower levels of rubisco in shade plants restricts the maximum photosynthetic rate because there is only so much rubisco available to fix carbon dioxide. One important vocabulary term is phenotypic plasticity, where there is variability among individuals of the same species grown in different light conditions or variability in shape among leaves on the same plant with different light exposures. As Smith and Smith note, phenotypic plasticity is the, quote, ability to change form under different environmental conditions. The relative growth rate, or RGR, expresses growth during an observed period of time as a function of the size of the individual. The units of RGR are grams per gram per time. The RGR is calculated as the net assimilation rate, or NAR, which is the weight gained per area per time, often in grams per square centimeter per time, times the leaf area ratio, or LAR, which is the total area of leaves per plant weight in square centimeters per gram. The leaf area ratio, LAR, is calculated as the leaf weight ratio, or LWR, which is the total weight of leaves per plant weight, times the specific leaf area, or SLA, which is the total area of leaves per weight of leaves. The link between water demand and temperature influences plant adaptations. Terrestrial plants have evolved a range of adaptations to variations in precipitation and soil moisture, and the demand for water is linked to temperature. Plants have to balance the trade-offs of opening and closing stomata. For example, when stomata are closed, there is a reduction in water loss, carbon dioxide gain, and evaporative cooling. Of course, photosynthesis rate declines and leaf temperatures rise. Plants respond to moisture stress differently with reactions such as leaf curling and wilting, inhibition of chlorophyll production that results in the loss of leaves, drought deciduous plants that drop their leaves at the inset of the dry season, and even a modified photosynthetic pathway. In C3 plants, light energy is captured and carbon dioxide is transformed into sugars in the mesophyll cells. In plants adapted to warmer and drier environments, the alternative C4 photosynthetic pathway increases water use efficiency. The C4 photosynthetic pathway spatially separates carbon dioxide fixation, which occurs in the mesophyll cells, and a simulation of carbon dioxide in the Calvin cycle, which is considered a dark reaction and occurs in the bundle sheath cells. There is an increase in photosynthetic efficiency of the C4 photosynthetic pathway, and for a given degree of stomatal opening and water loss, C4 plants typically fix more carbon yielding a greater water use efficiency. The C4 pathway is most commonly found in grasses native to tropical and subtropical regions. 
The KM pathway is the third type of photosynthetic pathway found especially in severe, arid, and hot deserts where water is scarce. The KM pathway has both fixation and assimilation occurring in the mesophyll cells, but these steps occur at different times of day. At night, stomata open, facilitating carbon dioxide intake. During the day, stomata close, and the Calvin cycle is completed using the C3 pathway. While the CAM pathway is slower and less efficient than either, either the C3 or the C4 pathways, the CAM plants reduce moisture loss by opening stomata at night, allowing persistence in such harsh environmental conditions. In response to loyal, lower soil water, a plant can increase carbon allocation to roots, allowing the plant to explore a larger volume and depth of soil and reduce the leaf area exposed to solar radiation and transpiration. Another possible adaptation is leaf area reduction, which is a result of a change in both size and shape. Leaves growing in reduced water conditions are generally smaller and thicker. There are several additional leaf modifications to minimize soil moisture, including cell wall thickness, stomatal size, density of vascular system, and hair, wax, and resins. Differences in plant morphology are most pronounced between species of plants adapted to wet or mesic and dry or xeric environments. Smith and Smith define mesic as, quote, moderately moist, end quote, and xeric as, quote, dry, especially in soil, end quote. Plates vary in their response to environmental temperatures. For example, species found in cooler environments typically have a lower net photosynthesis minimum, optimum, and maximum than species in warmer climates. These thresholds are related to biochemical and physiological adaptations. The difference in environmental temperature adaptations are most pronounced between C3 and C4 plants, though temperature responses are not fixed. When individuals of the same species are grown under different thermal conditions, a divergence in temperature response of net photosynthesis is often observed. That is, the optimal net photosynthesis shifts in the direction of the thermal conditions under which the plant is grown. A similar pattern is seen in individual plants in response to seasonal shifts in temperature, which is termed acclimation. Plants native to seasonally cold environments have evolved several adaptations for survival, including frost hardening, which is the conversion of cold sensitive cells into hardy ones. The formation or addition of protective compounds such as antifreeze and winter deciduous leaves, which are shed before seasonal cold sets in and then replaced by new leaves in spring. Plants exhibit adaptations to variations in nutrient availability. Plants require a variety of chemical elements or nutrients to carry out metabolic processes. The availability of nutrients has direct effects on plant survival, growth, and reproduction. There are two broad categories of nutrients, the macro and micronutrients. Macronutrients are those that are needed in large amounts. Smith and Smith identify nine macronutrients to include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sulfur, and potassium. In contrast, micronutrients, or the trace elements, are needed in lesser, often minute quantities. The prefixes macro and micro refer to the quantities needed, but do not directly reflect the importance these nutrients have to an organism. As an example of a macronutrient, nitrogen plays a major role in photosynthesis, and it is the major element found in both rubisco and chlorophyll. Recall the importance of rubisco, an enzyme, in catalyzing carboxylation. The maximum rate of photosynthesis is correlated with the leaf nitrogen content. 
Nutrient uptake depends on supply and demand, and uptake rates increase with the concentration until some maximum rate is achieved. Nutrient availability is directly related to geology, climate, and biological activity. Generally, there is a reduction in photosynthesis in plants characteristic of low nutrient environments. The ability of a plant to exploit nutrient resources is related to root mass, and in low nutrient environments, plants can compensate by increasing root production. Wetland environments present unique constraints on plant adaptations. Too much water can stress plants as much as too little water, and the symptoms of excess water are similar to symptoms of not enough water. Plants need sufficient water and rapid gas exchange with their environment, and much of this exchange occurs in the soils. But when soil pores are filled with water, roots are essentially drowned and must switch to anaerobic respiration. In the response to anaerobic or flooded conditions, several plant adaptations are apparent in wetland environments. For example, some plants accumulate ethylene in their roots, which stimulates cells to self-destruct and form gas-filled chambers called arenchyma. In some cases, flooded roots die and adventitious roots emerge above where oxygen is available. In other cases, shallow root systems develop in poorly drained soils, and pneumatophores may occur, which are specialized growths of the root system of plants growing where the water table fluctuates. Saline water also presents challenges for plants. Halophytes are described as plants that take in water containing high levels of solutes. For a halophyte to maintain a water potential gradient, they may have one or several strategies. Plants may accumulate high levels of ions within their cells, especially leaves. Plants may dilute solutes with stored water. Plants may secrete salt onto the leaf surface to be washed away by rainwater. Plants may develop salt intake or prevent salt intake through filtering root membranes. The degree of salt tolerance varies greatly in different halophytes. The following resources were consulted in developing this video lecture, including content, wording, and visuals.